you know, uh, last Sunday I wrote a poem and I ran across a, another poem that kind of fits what I'm going to speak about tonight. And I want you to, this is one I wrote in November 16, 2009. I'm finding all these stuff, you know, that I've done and I just, well, they're just sitting in my computer or on a piece of paper somewhere and I might as well use them, you know. Uh, the name of this poem is Where Do I Reside? Where Do I Reside? I can travel from place to place, triumphs, failures, obstacles, victories I might face. People, circumstances, circumstances, sadness, joy, things of happiness, things that can annoy. Inner and outward feelings, emotions that have or not meanings. Stubbornness, giving, firmness, weakness, self-centeredness, or meekness. Poverty, lack, prosperity, wealth, sickness, or health. Looking for an answer, I don't have to venture. Where do I reside? In my heavenly Father's arms do I hide. Where do I reside? With hope in Him I will abide. Grace, grace, and more grace is the place I reside. Lord, amen. Well, I want us to look at Ephesians 3.13 tonight. Ephesians 3.13. Two or three. Ephesians 3.13. And it reads, this is Paul talking to the Ephesians now. I had a pastor's wife, what she was a co-pastor at the church that we were at, that she said, Ephesians a day will keep the devil away. <laughs> so we, uh, this is the thing. If you weren't read the book of Ephesians, the chapter, you read it, it really make a difference. Well, Ephesians 3.13 says, For this reason I desire that you faint not at any at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees to the Father our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, that you will be rooted and grounded in love. Now, the, the scripture that jumped out in me was in 17. It says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And what was going into me, you hear this saying, home is where the heart is. Home is where the heart is. Praise the Lord. Now we have to realize that Christ may make his home in your hearts through your faith. And that's how Christ comes in by our faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And he comes into our heart and home is where the heart is. And so wherever the heart is, that's where your home and where we take where Jesus takes residence in us. Uh, but when you think about it, the Lord Jesus wants to make his home not only in our spirit, but he also he wants us to make his home in all the parts, our body and our soul. You know, when you get a house in, in the natural, we sometimes we have rooms in that house. Some rooms we decorate real well, and some rooms we just kind of live in. 
But then, I don't know how many of you have a drawer or a closet that is known as the junk drawer. And everything that you have, you have this junk in it. And you look in it and you try to find something in it and you think, well, I know I stuck it in here and you have a hard time finding it because there's so much other junk in there. Well, that's a little bit way our life is. We go through, just like I read, we go through triumphs, we go through you know, defeats, we go through uh, sadness, and we go through joy, we go through all these different things into our life. But we have to understand that what God wants to do for us to give all of ourselves to Him. Amen. He wants us to give His our body. But first of all, He talks about in verse 16 that His Spirit in the inner man. When we talk about our heart, you know, home is where the heart is. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, the inner man gets saved. Or otherwise, the spirit gets saved. And the battle that we have is in our flesh, in our soul. You know, we have, our, uh, we have the battle in our mind. We have in our will. And we have it in our emotions. And so we have to look at what, where is our heart? You know, the Bible talks how sometimes our heart can be very deceitful because of our unbelief. Because some of the circumstances that we go through is our heart can be very deceitful. Now, we also say that, it's, you know, as a man believeth in his heart, he shall speak. And so when we learn and we start speaking things about ourselves and we start speaking those things that we have to understand, we need to check what's really in our heart. Are we really letting God take over? So we have to understand that is he... Are we going to love him with all of our heart, all of our mind, and all of our soul? But we see, we understand that when we get saved, our spirit man gets saved. And so what we have to really wrestle with is our body and soul. You know, the spirit man wants to rise up because it's the Christ in us. Christ comes in us. Well, in Galatians 2.20. In Galatians 2.20 it says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So when we see this, we have to understand that Christ wants to make makes his home in our heart. He wants to make his home through our faith. And because our faith in Jesus Christ, that even though we're walking in the faith in the flesh, and we have all these obstacles and all the circumstances and all the people that bug us and, you know, all these things, and all the financial problems and all this. We have to understand, we have to let the promises of God because the Christ in us. We have to release that Christ in us from our inner man to control that. See, it's a battle between flesh and spirit. But do we love God so much that we trust Him in everything that we do? Do we really trust Him? So we have to get to this point. Or am I going to operate in the flesh even though I am in the flesh? But I, am I going to judge everything or I'm going to make all decisions because 
I'm in the flesh or I, am I going to let that spirit arise in me? Let that spirit rise in me that overcomes the flesh. That's the reason why that we have to understand that Christ did the sacrifice for us to come and live in us so that his spirit, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead will quicken our mortal bodies. That our fleshly bodies, that that spirit, that the Christ in us, in the inner man, is that spirit. And that's what we feel heartfelt with. You know, we have to understand, in Romans 8.10 it says, if Christ be in you, okay, that's a question. If Christ be in you, that is, have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Have you accepted him as authority in your life? Amen. Have you accepted him as the complete sovereign person that will reign in your life? So, <coughs> We have to see if you, that's a big word, and if Christ be in you, and by no shadow of a doubt, when you confess Jesus as Lord and Savior, oh, yeah. and confess him and accept him as your Lord and Savior, he takes that residence in you, in your heart, in your inner being, yeah. so that we may trust him and rely on him in all things. And you understand what I'm saying? All things. Because we can get so burdened down on what's happening in the world, what's happening around us, so down in our circumstances that we leave God out of it. And we wonder... And we make the question, God, where are you? Where are you? He's in you. He's in you. Yeah. He's in your inner man. Yes. Yeah. And you know, it says we can go and storm the gates of heaven. We can go to his throne room, God's yeah. throne room. But your mediator is right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, he, he's taken residence in you. And so we release that spirit and he goes to the Father. Because it says in Ephesians that, you know, that all blessings are in heavenly places. And in Christ Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. And where are we sitting? We're sitting at the right hand of, the, of Jesus. And we're right next to him. And so we go, and he's our mediator, and he go, we go through the Son to get to the Father. Yeah, but he said, it says, he, he lives in us. He lives in us. That same spirit that raised Christ from dead is in us. Yeah, so we have to understand that we talked about the body. <laughs> you know, that's where we get, you know, our bodies are in decay. You know, yeah. you know, right. there's... Uh, you got to realize we were created out of dust. You know, we were created out of dust. And it reminds me of a story. I, I have to go here. A little boy went to a funeral and his grandfather had died. And the preacher went from dust to dust, ashes to ashes. And, you know, the little boy was confused about that. You know, so he come home and says, uh, ask his mom, what's this dust to dust, ashes to ashes? Well, you know, well, it's, it's like this. He told about the dust, says, you know, God created man, Adam, out of dust. And, you know, you know, he made him out of dirt and you just made him out of dust and, and stuff like this. And so he will, once you die, your body goes back to dirt. <coughs> And, you know, back to the dust. And the little boys kind of understood that a little bit. 
And he got up. And everybody was asleep at night. And all of a sudden, he, the little boy said, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy. And she runs in and says, What's wrong? Look under my bed. There's somebody coming or going. <laughs> so we have to understand that we, our bodies will decay and our bodies will go through things. But in Romans 8.10 it says, If Christ be in you, how many you believe that Christ is in us? He's in our inner man. We've already saw that. He is in our inner man. He is in our heart. The body is dead because of sin. Wait a minute, what does that mean? Well, we're going to have heavenly bodies, but we're really not going to have flesh and blood. Because what does flesh? Flesh is the one that just, just, we, you lust in the flesh. You just, the flesh is what gets you in trouble. I'll be honest with you. Our flesh just, you know, we have to, so our body should be dead to sin. But as long as we're here, you know what happens. You know, it just, people just should be dead to sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Amen. Not because of our righteousness, but it's the righteousness of him. Amen. His characteristics that Christ in us, his righteousness becomes our righteousness. Thank you, Lord. You know, we are His righteousness. If Christ is in us, then what is the ability that righteousness is also in us? Amen. The ability not to only imitate Christ, but the, imita the ability to be like Christ because of the characteristics that Christ in our inner man is in us. And we can respond to that. Now, what we need to do is this. Is that we have to look at ourselves. And that's hard to do. Now, some of you are more prettier than I am. And you can look in the mirror. And you, you, you're all right. You know. You know, it's the old the, there There's a woman one time. She, she was getting older and, and she starts screaming and screaming and screaming and she and they said, what's wrong? There's an old woman looking at me right now in the mirror. You know, well, anyway, that, I don't know if that goes over your head or not. But, you know, so we have to understand that it's the Christ in us that makes the difference. And it's his righteousness. So does, do we have the ability to call his righteousness up in us? Yes. We do. We have that ability. But one thing we have to look at ourselves and quit being so critical. Because when you criticize yourself, when you depreciate yourself, what are you saying? You are touching God's handiwork. Because he says that we are his workmanship and we are marvelously made. You know, we kind of get this in some cultures. It's, it's attitude. I, in fact, I'm going to tell a story about this. Is uh, There's this island. And this girl in this island that the people... When they wanted to get married to somebody, they would give cows away as a dowry. So many cows. And this one girl, she was just, uh, she was kind of shy and, you know, kind of, you know, she's all right looking or anything like this. But this guy really wanted to marry her. Really wanted to marry her. And he said, oh. And so he, nobody in this village had over four cows ever offered as a dowry. Well, he wanted to marry her so bad. 
you know, everybody said, oh, she's just plain Jane and everything. This young guy, he went up and offered seven cows for her to the daddy. And you know what happened? The village started looking different at her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, she's a seven cow woman. Yeah. She's a seven cow woman. She must be something special. And then she started thinking, wow, I'm a seven cow woman. You know, because they didn't offer that. It changed her whole attitude. Did her looks change? No, it's her attitude in herself. Yeah. And see, that's what we have to understand. We're not going to, I'm not going to give you a lot of bull, you know, to tell you. But I'm going to tell you, when you get it into your mind of who you are in Christ, and you get that into you, you become more than a seven cow woman or, or whatever. Because you are bought by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You are made worthy by the blood of the Lamb. Yes, Lord. You know, you're made in God's image. And He looks as, as your beloved. So Amen. when we see, it's a thing of changing our hearts and letting the inner man rise up in us. And how do you do that? It's by faith. By faith that what you believe becomes the reality. Too many times we believe the opposite and we get put down pretty bad. You know, we have to understand this. If, if you truly believe that God's love loves you more than anything in your inner man, that you can overcome what's going on in your life, in your body. If you really believe that that Christ can heal you and by your stripes, by his stripes you are healed, and that inner man believes that, then you'll be healed. That's where the faith comes in. Too many times people will say, My my arthritis, my diabetes, it's not yours in the first place. But they take it as that. My aching back. Has anybody ever done that? Said that. Yeah. It's your back, but just, you know, it, the ache isn't yours. So we have to let that inner man that says, By Jesus' stripes we are healed, Amen. and it just rises up in us. So it says in Corinthians 13.5, I didn't put the right, I think it's 1 Corinthians. If it's not, you can look at seconds and see which one it is. I wrote down the wrong thing. Lord, give me my inner man. Come up and give me the right answer. It says, examine yourself. Start examining ourselves. What's going on in our body? What's going on in our soul that is not lining up with the inner man that Christ Jesus that's in us? What are the characteristics? What is his righteousness, the traits of God that are not lining up? So we have to understand, examine ourselves. And then it says, whether you be in faith, We need to check our faith thermometer. Is it blow freezing? Or is it fervent hot? What is our faith? You know, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. But you have to understand. Do you have a fervent faith? Does it really come about? It says, prove 
your own selves. No, you're not your own self, but Jesus Christ in you. It's the Jesus in you. As I began, home is where your heart is. Where's your heart? What does your heart believe? What is the faith? Where's your faith level? When we start talking negative and we let things go in our mind and it starts saying negative things to us, find that scripture. Find that promise that says, says that you will overcome. Start speaking faith. Speaking faith. Remember, I said in Galatians 2.20 earlier, when we learn that we are crucified with Christ, that's when we crucify our flesh daily and let the spirit man rise in us. It's no, no longer that I live, but it's the Christ who lives in us. The Christ that lies, lives in us. Lord. Then we also, the last part, and, I, and this is one of my favorite verses. Now I say that there's so many favorite verses. I guess I guess my the Bible is my favorite, my favorite verse. Is my favorite verse. Uh, yeah, it's my favorite book. All scriptures God's grace. All of that. It says, you know, home is where the heart is. But the scripture in Colossians one twenty seven says, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Question is. Where's your heart? Is Jesus really living in us? Yes, the scripture tells us that. Do we go to him in all things? Yeah. Probably not. But should we? Yeah. Yes. Do we let his righteousness his righteousness become our righteousness. Where do we place our heart? How many times do we just wrestle with things that eventually they come out all right? But we worry and we just get into this and we start exaggerating of the outcome that might be. But you know, true faith is when you're going through turmoil, even going through tribulation, even going through sickness, going through anything in life, do you let that inner man that gives you that hope, that gives you that hope, that hope. Let's, let's pray. Father God, we come to you right now. We thank you. Father, we are a living temple. And Christ lives in us. Father, we are that sanctuary that Christ lives in us. And God has allowed Jesus to tabernacle with us to become one in the Spirit with Him. Father, we thank You right now that we can say home is where the heart is in the heart of God and Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit lives in our inner man. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this day in Jesus' name that we will just praise you and love you and be obedient to you. In Jesus' name, amen.